Hi, how are you? Uh, I want to welcome you to History 132. We will be studying the period from Reconstruction up to around uh, Vietnam, Watergate, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, we have a semester to get through seven modules. Um, so it's a lot of work, uh, but I think I've spaced everything out really well for you guys. So um, you can organize your time and you can plan accordingly. Um, the syllabus is available on Blackboard, as well as um, all the modules. All the work will be done on Blackboard. Um, oh wait, I forgot. Um, I'm Professor Gaduti. I'll be the one that actually guides you through all this. All questions will come to me. Um, I've actually been at Quinnipiac for over 20 years, and I was once a student. I was actually once in your shoes, um, although I didn't have any online classes like you guys have, which is kind of a bummer because it's kind of cool too. Um, but I always like um, working with my professors. So, so, so please feel free to reach out anytime you need anything. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I try to uh, say the 24-hour rule. Um, give me at least 24 hours. Uh, not only do I teach here at Quinnipiac, but I'm a full-time history teacher um, in the Summers Public School System. I teach at Summers High School. I teach AP U.S. History, um, U.S. Government, and I also teach um, U.S. History to um, sophomores and juniors, the same period that we're actually looking at right now in this uh, in this course. So if any of you are aspiring teachers, feel free to give me a call or an email or, you know, whatever um, to discuss anything about, um, you know, teaching at the high school level. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to, you know, chat. Uh, so, so that's a, just a little bit about me. I don't want to get too into that. Um, but everything will be on Blackboard. Everything should be on Blackboard, all your assignments, um, if there's any issue with the assignments, if you see any problems on there, feel free to give me a call right away um, and just, uh, you know, let me know. Um, email is the best way to get a hold of me. I keep saying, you know, give me a call, but I mean email. So feel free to contact me via email um, and I'll get right back to you as soon as I can. Um, so that's important. Okay. So um, I, I have my email on our phone. So you know we need these things um, and uh, I should be able to respond so that's a little bit about that um, who I am and uh, where I'm coming from um, now for the course uh, there's a few things that you should know um, first of all the, the uh, you know books the books are important uh, the books are um, you have two books one is by Eric Foner that's um, give me liberty and that book is the background of U.S. history. That's your typical U.S. history textbook. That's supposed to help you navigate some of the big issues, some of the big uh, things going on within history. So use that book as background, as a starting point, especially for your term paper. Make sure you use that book as a way for you to learn more about a subject. Uh, and uh, so that's a key piece to help you with the background material, help you with the tests, help you with the reflections. Okay. The other book is a series of primary sources and um, research articles, so scholarly articles. And that book is vital for this course. Um, you're going to need that book in order to write your reflections, and you'll use that book on tests, and you'll also use that book as a jumping point for your term paper, okay? Um, so it's very important that you have a copy of that book. Um, so those are the big three, uh, or those are the big three assignments. Those are the big two books, okay? Um, I've just mentioned the assignments, but as for the books, try to get them. Um, I know sometimes things are a little crazy at the beginning of the semester, and if you can't get them right away, then um, there are some other alternatives on the website that you can do for the assignments. Um, for for example, for module one, I have Lincoln's second inaugural address, which you can use that as your primary source instead of using a primary source out of the um, major problems book. All right. So that covers a little bit about me. That covers the books. Let's talk assignments. All right. If I'm going too fast, please stop me. Oh no, wait, you can't. Well, you can pause me if you want. And then if you pause me, you know, you can always come back to this. Hold on, wait, let me get a sip of coffee. I, I, I think it's just a little sip.
All right, thank you. Sorry for my coffee breath. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, the assignments, I have the uh, you know syllabus on my screen over here. The assignments um, are pretty straightforward, okay? First assignment, um, let's talk about the reflections, okay? Reflections are important. Um, reflections help me see that you're understanding history um, and uh, a little deeper than just you know memorizing facts and you know people and things like that reflection papers should um, have a certain format I wrote this format down but I'm going to explain it briefly here just so um, you sort of hear it from me rather than just read it um, I should have an introduction the introduction should contextualize whatever primary source you're writing about so you so I'm sorry let me go back each reflection paper you have to choose one primary source from that module so whichever chapters in the major problems book that we're looking at I want you to choose one primary source and I want you to write a reflection on it so I want you to write a little bit about why that source is significant and why you think it is significant so in this case um, so the the format of that assignment would be a one paragraph introduction that contextualizes, meaning puts it in the period that you're talking about. So why is this important? So if you're talking about the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, which was issued by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War to free the slaves in the South, um, how would you contextualize that? Well, I would want to see that you understand why that is an important document, how that played a role in the war how that may have um, shaped some of uh, the soldiers' feelings about the war, how it may have laid the ground for the 13th Amendment and even the 15th Amendment. Um, so those are things that you will learn um, in, this, in this course, um, but it's also a way for me to understand that you understand why this is a significant uh, um, uh, primary source, whichever you choose, okay? So that's your introduction. Your second paragraph should be about the source. I want you to choose a quote from the source. I want you to talk about the source. Why did you choose this quote? Why is it significant? How does it relate back to your overarching understanding of the period? How does it relate back to just um, your overarching understanding of history and how that may play a role today? So I want you to take that second paragraph and that's where you bring in the primary source you actually bring in some quotes and you uh, you know write about it there your third paragraph which will be your conclusion just sums everything up and ex and gives some analysis so while you talk about the source in the second paragraph and you quote it and you explain why those quotes are linked back to your overarching understanding you can do some final analysis in that conclusion wrapping everything up it should be about one page so I'm not looking for long paragraphs you could go on to page two which a lot of people do because they they tend to write a lot but it should be about one page if you're only submitting half a page that isn't enough it should be double spaced um, Times New Roman is great to read on the uh, on the screen and you should submit them um, uh, through Blackboard okay, so you should submit them through Blackboard as an attachment um, Usually in Microsoft Word. That's the best one that works But if you don't have word other ones, you know work as well. I've seen pages work too Okay, I will grade them right on Blackboard. I will put a little blurb um, About uh, what I think about it. I'll try to uh, I try to use the software to make comments in it uh, But sometimes it doesn't work well, um, but I I may try to do that more all right, um, so that's the reflections, okay? Um, all right, so usually I stop any questions, but that's not really working for this format, so it's okay. Hold on, oh, oh, I did something over here. Here we go. All right, now let's talk about the tests. Also, just to be clear, this is an asynchronous course. So there are no, um, Zoom calls, there are no um, anything like that that you have to attend. Everything is done on your own. Everything is done at your own pace, okay? Um, the reading exams or tests, um, whatever you want to call them. Um, there's one per module, 
And each of those tests basically covers a bunch of different topics that we discussed. You get to choose five, five questions to answer. Um, you do not have to do all of them, um, but it is five. And you'll have, I believe uh, I set it for 50 minutes. I think the, the I'll change the syllabus, um, the syllabus I have right now. It's, it's, it's set for 50 minutes. So you'll have 50 minutes to get it done, okay? And um, once that time is up, it won't submit it automatically. It'll, it'll let you keep going, but if you keep going, I'll see if you go over that 50 minutes, okay? So it's not gonna submit it right away. Um, so you have five open-ended answer, um, excuse me, five open-ended questions to answer within that 50 minutes. I figure 10 minutes per question. Um, those tests, uh, I have gotten a lot of emails over the years, um, here and well, of people who struggle with the software to do these tests. My advice to you is to make sure that your software is good, make sure you have the most up-to-date computer, make sure you're in a good place with Wi-Fi, make sure of all those things. Because I have to be honest with you guys, once you open that test, you have to finish it. You cannot go back to it. If you close out of the test, it will submit it or it'll leave it hanging. Um, in which case, I cannot reopen that test for you. It's my policy not to reopen any tests. Once you open it, you must take it. It hurts the integrity of the test if I do it any other way. So please bear that in mind. You will have 50 minutes to do the test, which is plenty of time. Make sure you're in a good place. Make sure you're ready to go and you can answer all those questions, okay? Um, and uh, you will be using some of the primary sources so you can have that book there if you need it. The idea is that you're offering some analysis on these questions and it's not just uh, you know, who was Abraham Lincoln or, or what happened at the Battle of Gettysburg. They're not questions like that. They're questions related to the readings. They're questions related to the primary sources. So make sure you're familiar with all the readings from that week. I don't want you to be um, caught off guard, okay? I'm not one of those teachers. I'm not trying to get you. I'm being very open about what will be on those tests. In addition to the books that are on that test, I give two lectures each week. Those lectures are already recorded and they are on Blackboard. I filmed them in 2018. There's one error in there about impeachments um, in the Reconstruction lecture. Sorry about that. Uh, but when I recorded that, um, the history about impeachments was a little different. Um, but you'll see what I mean when you get there. Okay. Um, I think that's the only thing that I would need to change since 2018. Um, so those are available on Blackboard. They're on YouTube, just like this, uh, for you to use when you need them. Okay. Um, the last piece, um, so let me know if you have any questions about those tests. The last assignment of the big three assignments, oh, and b before I get to this last one, you will have a reflection and a test every module. So that's a total of seven reflections and seven tests, okay? And the reflections are worth 40%. So I'll do a cumulative average of all your reflection grades and then that'll be 40% of your grade. And then the tests are a cumulative average and they will make 30% of your grade. So that's 70% of your grade are those reflections and tests, just to be clear, okay? This isn't a however many points you have divided by those many points. I sectioned it off into percentages. Take a look at the syllabus so you can see where the percentages are, okay? All right. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the term paper. The term paper is worth 30%, and um, I want it to be something that you write that's an extension of what you have been studying. Maybe an episode, some sort of a, you know, maybe a person, maybe an event, something that you want to explore 
a little further than what we did in this course. So the term paper itself is going to be five pages. So it's not a very, very long paper. It's just five pages on, it could be the Montgomery bus boycott if you're in the civil rights. It could be um, uh, the Great Depression and how FDR tried to handle the Great Depression with the New Deal. Uh, it could be any of those topics. So um, if you're not sure what topic, feel free to email me and I can help you out. Uh, but it should be five pages, um, 12 point font and Times New Roman. You're gonna submit it on Blackboard. And in this case, um, it, well, in, in all cases, I want you to cite your material. Um, and uh, so, so especially stuff that I did not assign. So if it's, uh, it, it, if it's a book, an article, something like that, I want to make sure that you cite those sources properly. And you may use the MLA format, um, or you can use the Chicago Manual of Style, which is another way to cite using footnotes. Some of you are familiar with it, some of you aren't. Just use MLA, that's fine with me, keep it simple. All right, um, and that is, um, that is gonna be worth 30% of your grade. Um, and uh, all of that is listed on Blackboard. Take a look at that when you get a chance, okay? That sums up a little bit about the course, a little bit about the assignments, um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions at any time. And until then, uh, I, I hope you have a good start of the semester and get to read some history. So long.